This Husqvarna chainsaw right here belongs to my buddy Eli. Watch what happens when we pull the rope on this, pull the starter over. Look what's happening to the chain. The chain turns as we pull that rope. That should not happen. Now I know a lot of you guys who know what you're talking about out there are yelling at your screens right now. It's a broken clutch spring, a broken clutch spring. 90% of the time you would be correct. However, not today. I'm gonna tell you why it's doing that, how to fix it, and then you know what? At the end of this video, I am going to show you what we could have done to prevent this from happening in the first place. So stay tuned for that. Labatt Blue. Hey everybody, welcome back to Steve Small Engine Saloon again. Little website splasher down there for you. I got some quick links up here for you in the information button as usual. So as you can see, I already got the side cover and the barn chain taken off on this chainsaw. Now let's have a look at this clutch. Here's the clutch right here. And there's a drum that surrounds that clutch. Now we turn that drum and the clutch turns. That should not happen. That drum here should be turning freely without moving the clutch. So there's something wrong in there, we gotta take the clutch off. Little impact driver like that. Now, if you want to see, oh remember by the way guys, a clutch turns um, the opposite way as a normal nut and bolt. It's a left hand thread. So remember that when you're taking the clutch off. There we go. There's the clutch right there. Came right off. Um, if you guys want to see that proper tool that you need on a lot of Husqvarna's, right underneath this video, I have a description. There's a link for you in that description if you want to check one of those out. Okay, the clutch is off now. Now let's look at that drum. See that? It's turning the crankshaft. It is stuck. It should be spinning freely on that crankshaft. It's stuck on that crankshaft. Look at this. That should pull off easily. That should literally just slip right off of there. It's not coming off. We'll just work this. I already know what's going to happen here. Put this under here. There we go. Drums off. Look at look at that stuff that just came out. That is unbelievable. Look at all that shrapnel right there. That should have been. Um, that should have looked like this. All that shrapnel right there used to look like this. <laughs> A brand new needle bearing that's your clutch drum needle bearing right there that thing was so destroyed right there it was actually sticking the drum to the crankshaft so it's a pretty easy fix actually uh, um i got a again underneath this uh video in the description i have a link for that needle drum bearing so there you go we clean all this up in here now get all that metal shrapnel out of there and put that needle bearing back on, the new needle bearing, obviously, and you can clean the inside of that drum up a little bit in there too, if there's some junk in there. And then you just slide that back on. Now, look at that. Now that's what's supposed to happen right there. That drum should be spinning around freely like that without turning that crankshaft. Hit that. Now, what could we have done to stop that from ever happening in the first place? It's general maintenance on a chainsaw. I'll show you a little trick here. Not all chainsaws do this. Um, you're gonna see right in the end of that crankshaft, right there, there's gonna be a little divot right there, right in the center. If you take a little wire or something really thin and poke it in there, 
and it stops. It doesn't go in. Well, that means that your chainsaw doesn't have this feature on it. But if you have something thin like that and you stick it in there and it goes all the way in like a, like a, maybe an inch or so, the only reason that hole is going in that far is if you have this feature right here. I'm going to show you that right now. If you spin the crankshaft around right in the side of the crankshaft when the clutch and drum and bearing are all off of there, you spin that crankshaft around and you'll see, maybe you'll see a little hole in the side of the crankshaft right there. Guess what? That hole that goes in the end of the crankshaft comes right out to that side hole. Hey, you guys know what this is? This is a typical bar greasing grease gun. Again, right underneath this video in my description, I got a link for you to check one of these out too. They're super inexpensive, well worth having in your shop. This is the grease gun that you would normally use for the tip of your bar. You got a little, a lot, not, not all chainsaws have this again, but some have this little grease hole right here in the tip of the bar. That's what that tool's for. You just pump that in there like that and it squirts grease into the bearing in that, in that tip right there. It's the same tool that you use for preventive maintenance on this drum bearing like we just saw here. Watch this. You take that same grease gun, you put it in here and you squirt it in here. Look at this. Watch what happens. Boom. You see how the grease comes right out the side? That grease comes out that side hole right where your needle bearing is so you can keep that thing greased and keep it from exploding, drying out and seizing up on your engine like this one did. Bingo, we got her all back together again. Now watch this, pull that cord, chain doesn't move. That is the way this should be. I really hope this saved you guys some money. I hope this was informative. Give me that thumbs up button, guys. That would be super cool if you did that and subscribe to my channel. Um, share this with your friends and put some comments down. Let me know what you thought of this video right here. And uh, man, I think I'm done for today. Labatt Blue, till the next video, guys. Steve out.